Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. Today we're pouring a, about a 1,400 square foot pool deck. We've got about 20 yards of concrete coming, 4,000, 3 8 next. And we're using the Z pool forms this morning. I don't know if you can see that. I'll come up here and show you. You can see we're using those Z pool forms. Okay. Mixing up the creek now. This is going to be a stamp concrete pool deck. We're using uh, Marshalltown stamps on here. Marshalltown sent us some really nice stamps. They're stone textured stamps, so we're going to use them today. I'll show you here in the back of the truck. These are the new Marshalltown stamps. It's got stone texture. This is going to be a really cool textured pool deck. All right guys, so we're starting this pour now. We're starting up on the, the thin end, the four foot wide end. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna pull the concrete back to right around that corner. That's where we also, you know, are gonna start stamping. So when we're pouring this thing, we gotta keep in mind how we're gonna stamp it too. Uh, Cause it's two loads. If it was one load, then we could pretty much just start anywhere. But in, just in case the two loads don't dry the same, we always wanna keep in mind uh, you know the the best practices for stamping it as well so we're getting this concrete poured out it's a 4000 psi mix 3 8 stone we like using the smaller stone when we stamp uh, it just makes it stamping a little bit easier for us hey, in case you guys don't know me my name's mike day uh, i i own days concrete floors incorporated this channel is all about concrete. If, if you guys like concrete, go ahead down there and hit the subscribe button now. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, it'll just help us it rank better and, and get out to more people. If uh, you guys want to learn how to finish concrete, how to pour concrete, then that's what this channel is all about. It's just for you guys. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm magging that edge where the, the Z pool forms are. That pool form, that front face, is going to have a stone textured face to it. And it's going to overhang the pool a couple inches. Those forms are a, a, a kind of a specialty uh, type tool or, or form that we use when, when a coping doesn't, when the pool doesn't come with a coping, then we install that one on it. And that's a whole extra for us. So, I mean, we charge extra for that. So here we are straight edging. We kick screed pretty much everything when it comes to pools to make sure everything's perfect. The concrete slopes away from the pool about an inch and a half, that's 16 feet. We don't like sloping anything to the pool. That way when it rains, the water will run away from the pool and not into the pool. You can see I got my daughter working for me this summer. She's in college. She's the one on the right there in the maroon sweatshirt. And then her friend Abby's in the blue. She, they're both in college. This is a good summer job for them. Um, Abby's also part of the family. She's been, I've known Abby since like second grade. Um, both coached them in basketball. They're both two-time high school state champion basketball players. Uh, now they're moved on to college. So as you can see, we're moving down this pool deck. This first truck's about 10 yards of concrete. I'm vibrating that edge really good to make sure we have no air pockets and then I'm tapping it also so when we strip that form it, 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 the face of it looks really nice we don't have to do any patching who else out there pours stamp concrete pool decks if you if you pour a and finish stamp concrete then you know give me a heads up down there in the in the uh, comments let me know that you stamp concrete if you don't, you know, if you want to learn about stamping concrete, then I'm putting out more and more videos about it. I'm going to come out with a course too. If you'd like, if you'd like a course on it where I teach you step by step, then say down in the comments, uh, you know, make a course. That way I'll know if, if enough of you guys want a course about it, I'll, I'll make the time to do it. It takes a lot of time to make a course and get it out there. So let me know if you guys want that. Stamping concrete can be very profitable. It can also be, you know, it, it looks really nice when you're done. It's, uh, you know, a broom finish is, is one thing, but a stamp finish is a really cool finish, especially around a pool like this. 
what do you guys see the finished product this is part two of a, of a four-part series of videos on this project uh, if you haven't seen part one I'll have it up a link up there up top you can see it flash up there right now it's about the forming and the setup part two is about the pouring part three is going to be about the stamping process and then part four will be you know sawing cleaning it and sealing it so it's it's quite a process when you stamp concrete it's not just in and out in a day As you can see we're coming down that that wide side now that's 16 feet wide the other two sides are four feet and one side's eight feet plus that little walkway you see there on the right we're almost done this truck this truck's going to run out right about here and then we'll get on to that second truck you can see that was me bull floating there so we'll get that truck out of there here's a second truck so again we're going to keep pouring the same way we would stamp so we're going to just add on to that and then work our way around the pool you can see we got a wheelbarrow over there that other side over there by the wheelbarrow is a little bit a little bit muddy it rained the night before here so the concrete driver isn't going to drive down that other side so we're going to have to wheel that last four foot piece you got to be really fussy when pouring a pool that guys i mean there's only one chance to get this right and you want to make sure you do it right it doesn't pay to go back and have to fix anything so I mean we hustle when we pour but we're not trying to hurry we want to make sure all the pitches are right everything looks really good when we pour especially those when you have those inside forms like that you want to make sure they don't move everything's nice and straight you got Darren there running the chute pulling the wire up as we go we didn't put anything under the wire to help hold it up because Number one, we had to back the concrete truck across it to get the big side. And we're gonna have to wheelbarrow across it on this other side. So we'll pull it up as we go. We also have fiber mesh in the concrete. So there's a there's a fiber reinforcement and there's also the wire mesh. So there's two reinforcements in here. Concrete's four inches thick. It's gonna be a good rugged pool deck. The two girls there, they're really picking up the, the, the skill fast. I mean, this is their second week working. It really helps to have a couple extra hands. Usually it's just the three of us, me, Darren, and Luke pouring stuff. So, you know, having a couple extra hands for the summer is going to be great. And hopefully they'll decide to come back next summer. They'll be even more experienced. How many of you guys out there do concrete for a living have a hard time finding help? Uh, let me know down in the comments. It's just, it's, it's hard to find skilled help in this trade. And that's kind of what this channel is about. It's, it's helping people learn this trade. So, I mean, you can go out and get a really good paying job or maybe even eventually start your own business. All right, we're gonna get that truck moved over to the other side. I think we gotta get a couple cars moved there. And then we'll get this thing poured. Yeah, I'm over there finishing bull floating that, that side, then we'll move over back that truck up as far as we can from there while we're waiting for them to move the cars you know I've got I've got one course out already guys about how to form and pour a concrete slab if if you're trying to learn concrete you know that's a good beginner course for concrete slabs that's I'll have that down there in the description 
you can check that out. I've also got another course about how to repair cracks in concrete, foundation walls. That's a whole business in itself also. You could check that out too if you want. If you want to learn how to make some extra money. All right, we're getting those cars moved. Now we can get the truck where we need it. Get this thing poured. All in all, this probably, I think this took us between an hour and an hour and a half to pour this pool deck. This is a little bit bigger one than normal. I mean, most people's pool decks that we pour are around, I don't know, 800 to 1,000 square feet. This one's closer to 1,500, 14, 1,500. It's a pretty good sized pool deck. Luke's going to jump right on the wheelbarrow there and he'll get it wheeled. There's Abby. Abby's in the blue, T is in the maroon. Working the, the come-alongs or the concrete rakes. What do you guys call those things? I call them come-alongs. Some people call them rakes. Some people call them spreaders. Let me know down in the comments what you guys call them. gonna make sure that front face is vibrated that pencil vibrator we got man that thing is if you guys don't have one of those we use that for everything that just makes the form you know the inside face of forms or if you're doing steps or anything it just takes out almost all the bug holes it makes everything look really nice when you strip it there'll be a, a link down there too I mean you guys can get those anywhere probably from your from your uh, tool supplier, local tool supplier. You can get them on Amazon too though. I'll have a link from Amazon down there if you want to check that out. We use that on most all our pours, unless it's just a simple concrete floor, but anything we've done forming on, we use that thing. All right, so I'm coming down this side with a short rod, kick screeding that little bit. We like those magnesium straight edges too. Those are really lightweight. They clean up easy. Concrete really doesn't stick to them very much. You can see I'm tapping that with my fingers. Making sure all the air pockets are out of there. Even though we vibrate it. There still is always a little bit of air left in there. You, when you tap that, you can see it come right out. So again, guys, if you guys want to learn how to stamp concrete stay tuned for part three uh, I'm gonna briefly show you you know how, how we attack this thing with the stamps but if you want a course on that you gotta let me know I'll put the time in I'll make one a step-by-step -step course on how to stamp but enough of you guys got to want that thing so I so I know you need it you know I'll, I'll put in the time and make a really good one for you I also have a a Facebook page guys I mean go ahead down there I'll have a link to my Facebook page we're putting out content every day on that about all the tips and tricks and the little things we do to to be successful at pouring and finishing concrete then my Instagram down there too get on that social media guys and uh, same with Twitter I got a Twitter account that we're posting to every day trying to help you guys learn as much as possible So again, this is part two of a four-part series. I'll have part one, a link to it here at the end of the video. You can go check that out. And then parts two and three, when they come out, I'll have them linked at the end of the video too. This is, uh, we're pouring in Freeport, Maine. How, how many of you guys have been to L.L. Bean? This is 
Freeport, Maine is home to L. Bean Company. I think probably most of you guys have heard of that. L. Bean is, is an icon in the retail business. You can shop there for anything. So we're finishing this up. We're almost down to that last corner. 20 yards of concrete around here. We're going to get ready to stamp it. So stay tuned for that next video, guys.